Next, uh, we have Carol Haisatsue. Carol is a former media personality and producer in Tokyo. Um, influenced by the 2011 Fukushima disaster, she began working with St. Louis Obispo Mothers for Peace in California and the Metropolitan Coalition Against Nukes in Japan, as well as other groups fighting for a nuclear-free world. Carol Haisasue. Thank you. Ohayo gozaimasu. Good morning. I'm humbled to be surrounded by so many dedicated people, to be here with such distinguished leaders and lifelong activists of the anti-nuclear movement. I feel like a tiny new recruit among giants. Like other post-war Japanese, I knew plenty about the effects of the atomic bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. How thousands, hundreds of thousands died instantly, including about 100,000 civilians, turned into mere shadows, or the walking dead, or unbearably ill for decades, or so damaged that their children and their children would suffer birth defects. We had family friends who were affected personally. We knew the stigma the survivors were suffering, not being hired by employers who were worried about debilitating diseases affecting their employees, or marriage partners who didn't want deformed children. We knew the catastrophic effects of radioactive material from the fallout at Hiroshima and Nagasaki to the nuclear tests in the South Pacific that sickened and killed members of at least one Japanese fishing boat and turned generations of Pacific Islanders into refugees. But we didn't know enough, not enough to say no to the nuclear industry when it came to push nuclear power on Japan. Instead, we were sold a bunch of myths and we bought them all. The deception and our willingness to buy it have led to the worst nuclear accident ever. Fukushima is far from over. In fact, as we approach the eighth anniversary, it's largely disappeared from most people's minds. The government is forcing evacuees back to land still contaminated, cutting off compensation. Talk about radiation or contamination and health effects is all taboo. Meanwhile, the pediatric cancer epidemic continues. The stigma is back, and evacuee children are being bullied, sometimes into taking their own lives. Many live in fear. Many more live in denial. It angers me so much that the current administration, led by the very hawkish Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, is not only ignoring the situation, but trying to rewrite our constitution and create a nuclear arsenal. When I moved to California in 2006, I discovered that the land that I had fallen in love with was less than 10 miles from the state's last operating nuclear plant, Diablo Canyon. I didn't like the fact, but as long as it was operating safely, well, nuclear safety is one of those myths. Soon after the Fukushima disaster shook me awake, I joined San Luis Obispo Mothers for Peace, an amazing group of people who have been fighting for peace and justice for 50 years. They taught me so much. But the more I learned, the more horrified I was. You have to keep replacing the nuclear fuel? And there's nuclear matter traveling around the world all the time? And the spent fuel, far more toxic, is nowhere to go? And I learned how the industry was sickening people everywhere, from the native tribes and lands near uranium mines to the communities near nuclear facilities. Because even when nukes are operating safely, there's still radiation being released. And when they're not operating safety, well, just look at Fukushima. I feel like I've been duped my entire life. Like many others, I was a victim of willful deception by the nuclear industry. It was from activists like you that I learned the terrible reality. We speak of a chain reaction when we talk about fission, but in it, I see a metaphor for the entire industry taking a life of its own, the destruction spreading from Nevada to Hiroshima, Nagasaki, South Pacific, tribal lands in Australia and the US, to the lives of ordinary people near Sellafield, Santa Susana, Three Mile Island, Chernobyl, Fukushima, 
I couldn't list them all. There are too many places. The only end to this chain reaction is total annihilation. So we have to break the chain of nuclear bondage, but at the same time build a different chain. One based on humanity and compassion for all living things for this beautiful blue planet we call home. A little over 25 years ago, I visited Tinian, a tiny dot of an island south of Saipan in the Northern Marianas. In 1945, this was the busiest airport in the world. Dozens of B-29s took off every day to firebomb Tokyo, Osaka, and other targets, as well as Enola Gay and Boxcar. By 1991, though, the island was back to its sleepy self. The military airfield, a distant memory, deserted and abandoned to the elements. Only a shell remained. Gutted buildings, runways taken over by jungle vines. And if you wandered around enough, you'd find the small plaques that indicated where they'd loaded Little Boy and Enola Gay, the pit where Fat Man sat. There were amazingly unremarkable plaques, small squares near the ground. In a way, in Congress, to the amount of destruction they caused. But the jungle vines erasing the past gave me solace. It was as if our mother, Earth, nature, was working hard to smudge out the ugliness that we had created. I prayed that the roots of peace would work the same way. If we could only plant a tiny seed of peace in every heart, I pictured the vines of peace taking over the world covering up the monstrous acts man has committed throughout history until there is no more no more war just a lush jungle of peace and goodwill the activists here and around the world are the gardeners tending these vines of peace my friends in tokyo who have been protesting in front of the prime minister's residence every friday night for the last seven years my friends in the Bay Area, who gather at the Japanese consulate every month on the 11th, we have much work to do before Japan can ride its course. My friends in California, starting with Mothers for Peace, who have dedicated themselves not only to shutting down Diablo Canyon, but nurturing a world where children can grow up safe and in health. My friends, my comrades all over the world, who see and share the truth that this world has no place for nukes. Activists whistleblowers, truth revealers. Keep reaching out, keep spreading, keep tending those vines of peace until we can transition into another state of existence, one that is humane, just, moral, and decent. Thank you so very much from the bottom of my heart. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 